Today's video is all about the recovery process post-marathon and what you should be looking to achieve. What are you trying to do over the couple of days, weeks, etc. post-marathon? What should you be looking out for? What role does gym play? What role does flexibility play? And when it does come to setting new goals or getting back running, how might that look and what would be helpful? I did a run today. I called it cement. Cement meaning good solid run, but also those good solid runs were the foundation of my marathon plan that just led to me running 211.51 and coming third of the Dublin Marathon. Hilly, tough course, really tough day, but those days up the mountain in font, the cement days, those steadier days, are likely what really helped contribute to such a solid foundation on race day and such a great fitness. Today I'm going to go through some gym stuff that I did. So I did my run this morning. It was 16 and a half kilometers, 17k, around six minutes per mile. Good solid run, good solid start to the day. But knowing that today's all about that recovery process, we're now day eight, nine post marathon and now's the time to get back in the gym and start correcting what it is that the marathon has taken away from the body. So the way we'll look at this video today is a chat about how I go about recovering from the marathon, what I start to contribute, how I break it down, you could say, to make sure that I can move forward as quickly as possible because you don't wanna lose some of the hard work that you've put in, some of the fitness that you've gained, but there are things that you have to address to move forward and be in a good position, perhaps if you are going to race again or just for the future. So no single one decision is the correct one or the wrong one, but lots of really good decisions can add up to something fantastic. That's the way you've got to look at this recovery process. And so getting in the gym today was one of those areas that really helps recovery. And so I've, I've gotten physio, I've gone to the physios, I've, I've allowed the physio to assess where things are at. I can give feedback, they can get some hands-on work telling me where's my range of motion, have I lost strength in certain muscle groups, etc. Left side, right side, when they're treating the left side or the right side, is there imbalances? And then the next step is to get yourself in the gym. So if gym's not already a part of your program, it should be. But what I'm looking to achieve out of gym today isn't this heavy lift. I'm not even really trying to build strength. Today's gym is almost just a reactivation of muscles, re-getting some sort of load, weight, through the muscles to get them operating and doing what they're supposed to be doing. When your muscles are finished a race or when you take a few days off or when you know you've trained hard, you're breaking the muscles down. That means that they're losing strength. You're breaking the individual fibers within the muscles down, they lose strength. The best way to start rebuilding that is guess what, getting in the gym. I avoid gym for the first week post-marathon just to let my body just settle down, let everything calm down. If it's gonna recover itself at first, I want to allow that process to take its course or run its course, you could say. And then what I'm looking for is to start helping it. So that mainly involves bringing back everything that existed before the marathon, post-marathon. So you have to look at it as what's different today, now that the marathon's over, than the day before the marathon, for example, right? And so you're, you're looking mainly at, I've got muscle soreness, I've lost flexibility. So when I try to touch my toes or, you know, I can't really do that anymore. There's tightness and stiffness in the muscles. So what I like to do in my sort of post-marathon recovery phase is bring some of those skills back. To get flexibility back at first, you just have to rest. So some of that tightness, some of that soreness is you've broken the muscles down to a place that they've never been to before. And so until they recover, you don't really know if your flexibility is hindered because of muscle soreness and, and tension within the muscles because they're literally broken right down 
or once that recovery process has happened, is my flexibility back or do I need to work on that flexibility? We're not talking about being yogi masters here, we're just talking about getting that range of motion back to perhaps where it was prior to race day. Training stroke racing is always gonna break the muscles down. For every runner, yoga or stretching or some type of mobility routine should play a role in your everyday life. That's gonna get you on the start line in a better place, help cut down injuries, and also open your stride up and just make you feel a bit better. I also think when I'm doing that range of motion sort of program or routine is when I become in tune with my body. Where's it at? It's only until you start stretching things or moving different ways that you realize that right side is a bit worse than the left. But try to include some of that into your recovery all the time. The actual gym routine today, as I've shown you, and I've been going through some of that, you know, in the background, all I'm doing is starting to reactivate the muscles that broke down the most. So when I'm in at the physio, and I'm getting sort of attention on different parts of my body, the parts that are talking to me or maybe sorer than others. For me, it was calves and hamstrings and glutes. And so a lot of the gym program today is running through exercises that hopefully by injecting the muscle, you could say, with a little bit of load and a little bit of you know weight and a little bit of force, it encourages the muscle to get itself moving again, operating the way it should, reactivate some of those muscles within the, you know, the fibers and the muscles, get them doing what they should be doing. And, and if you wait too long, two weeks, three weeks, they can probably build what would be the likes of more scar tissue and, and, and they stiffen up more than they probably would have. Getting in the gym, no matter the race, no matter recovering from injury, should be runner's first protocol. I, I think it used to be rest, ice, compress, elevate, and now it's kind of consult physio, strength, <laughs> rest, ice, you know? And, and essentially the reason muscles have broke down, the reason there's muscle soreness, is because they weren't strong enough for the job that you made them carry out. Now, when you've ran a marathon, trying to build that strength pre-marathon is probably next to impossible. So there's always going to be some muscle soreness and tightness and wear and tear post-marathon because you're extracting a lot out of your body on race day and half marathon and 10k if you're not conditioned for these events. The more conditioned you are, the better you feel coming out of it. You're not as sore, you're not as beat up. But Jim, I went to the gym today, like I said, to get the muscles that you're sore Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, post-marathon. You go see the physio. He gives you a bit of treatment. You go for a run. When you finish that run, parts of you are still a bit sore. For me, calves, hamstrings, glutes. I guarantee you by going in the gym today and getting those muscles working again, I'll start that process of the next time I go for a run, the next time I get some treatment, there's not gonna be that same muscle soreness because those muscles are starting to work in the way that they're supposed to again. We're activating them, we're getting them switched on, we're getting them firing, and not only that, they're starting to work in sync together with the other muscles. Super, super important in that recovery period to bring in some gym. When it comes to getting yourself back into you know, running again, it really depends on if you're being assessed by a sports masseuse or yourself or a physio, how has the body came out of the marathon? There's no guarantees that there might not be a little bit of an injury or, or extra soreness that perhaps you weren't expecting. So everyone must treat that process as an individual. I don't believe in just sitting around for the sake of sitting around. And I don't mean that just from an emotional standpoint and and yes I run for my mental health and yes I run to improve psychology so I do like to get out and run but I really mean that there's no book already written for how long you personally must recover so I like to give it a few days so I, I rested for two days and then I did an easy run on the Wednesday where my body was a bit sore but it wasn't anything I've not felt previously after previous marathons and then on the Thursday I actually did a little bit of up-tempo training you could say not as quick as marathon pace but not miles away 
I kind of regretted that and, and some people might be thinking, of course you did, it was day four after the marathon, but I run through that little bit of training and it was 15, 20 minutes up tempo. And then what I'm looking for is when I finish that, am I sore, am I more sore than normal? Am I hurting for the rest of the day? So there was a little bit of tenderness and soreness post session, but then it kind of faded throughout the day. And so, yes, it was probably a day or two too soon, but in the scheme of things, it's not like I was aching after, it's not like anything was screaming at me. So it wasn't too bad. I controlled the pace. If you can run 26 miles at five minute pace, 5.15 to 5.20 shouldn't beat the body up too much. If it does, then you're not recovered yet. So that was my sort of roll of the dice. Then it really comes down to, well, what are you going to train for next? If you have a race that you've already penciled in and, and you kind of need to get back to training, well then split logic with, I have a race coming up. And that's understandable. So most of your decisions are gonna be logical about recovering from the marathon. Some of those might be forced because you might be in pain, you might have an injury that needs addressed. The rest then comes down to, can I get out and do some running? If you run for like your mental health, for example, or you do have other races coming up, or you just like getting out for a run, well then strike a balance between, I'll do some running, but perhaps not full training like normal. And that's out of respect that your body just ran a marathon for you. So way up between logic and, and emotion, I'm not saying you have to do nothing for two weeks or three weeks or four weeks. I think that might actually be worse for your body. And then when you try to get back running, you might find it a chore. Get some kind of focus penciled into the diary, whether it's a race, whether it's a new goal, to get that psychology back in that mindset of, I have something that I'm working towards, a reason to get out the door. I think a lot of the struggle post-marathon is you had this big focus, it was really exciting, and then when it's over or a half marathon or a 10K and you've achieved your goal or you didn't, there's this down period where life can get really quite overwhelming and, and, and bring us down almost. So pencil something else in. It doesn't have to be right away. Get something penciled in a diary, get back focused, start moving towards that. Recovery will be very individual, but start to think about what have I taken away from my body that I need to start getting back. Strength, flexibility, get the psychology back to being focused how it was before the marathon and you're really on the right track. I hope that helps. Lots of gym stuff, nutrition, psychology, all that kind of good stuff, all on that running website. If you watch my videos, I've spoke about it enough by now. That's a running school I set up. It's been up nearly a year, helping a lot of people understand little things that they can start working on to be better at running. But all the best with your recovery, any race for that matter, and happy training. Doesn't like my thumb at all.